I genuinely love Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's an amazing evolution of the formula that they laid out in Final Fantasy VII Remake. The combat is much improved with a larger pool of people to pull from, as well as improved mechanics like the synergy abilities and now just being able to properly fight in the air. I also think the difficulty of the game is near perfect on normal mode. It was just enough challenge that I had to think about the battles, but not so much that I was pulling my hair out. But the game does have some serious issues, especially near the end game. And while I'm still coming away with a lot of positive things to say about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I think it falls into the traps that many AAA games fall into and many JRPGs have fallen into in the past. Now, I will be discussing this game in depth, so if you don't want any spoilers, then just click off the video. The video will be here for you whenever you do beat the game. But I will start with the positives and lay out why I actually love this game in the first place. As a man who thinks gameplay trumps everything in video games, Final Fantasy VII Remake is one of the best RPGs ever created, and it also has the best combat system of any game I have ever played full stop. Remake showed that the developers understood how to perfectly meld action and turn-based combat in a system that I don't really think was ever really done beforehand and hasn't really been matched since. Now in saying that, there were some issues back then, specifically with aerial combat. Trying to get Cloud up into the air was absolutely atrocious and using Barret was kind of annoying and just kind of having to build up your ATB to be able to attack these ranged enemies was super frustrating. But they fix this in two ways in Rebirth. First, the majority of the melee characters now have a launch combo where if you dodge and then hold square, Cloud will jump into the air. But also you have synergy abilities that will launch the enemy up into the air. And you can use, say, Tifa and Cloud to launch Tifa up into the air. Or Yuffie and Tifa. And you can just mix and match everything to get your characters up into the air. Which fix one of the major issues with the combat system in Remake. And on top of that, every single character can get elemental abilities that use ATB rather than MP so you don't have to use your materia. So even characters like Barret who you typically wouldn't deck out with a lot of spells still has elemental abilities that he can use to weaken and pressure the enemies and it just made engaging in combat both on the ground and in the air just so much more fluid and way less frustrating than the original. And then even the open world, I still enjoy doing side quests and doing all the side objectives even though the objectives are you know typical you know clear out a tower or fight this enemy but it's how they melded it all into all the systems and how every single quest gives you all these upgrades the proto relic quests in general are just really strong and really interesting in their own right and then even just the more mundane side quests are all linked with one of your party members so you will always have a party member interacting with a side quest with you so you will have say red 13 following you around and he'll give you you know a cool bit of backstory or you might get a funny little joke out of it and i think that's just how you make these more mundane tasks a bit more bearable because all the systems just work really well together and then on top of that this game is just a very character focused game which i really love because i absolutely adore every single character in this game because they're just so unique and diverse and like you know, Kate Sit is a robot that has a fat moogle underneath him. And Red 13 is this weird experimental dog that has a very interesting story arc that I don't really remember from the original. And I'm not sure if they change much about it. And then even the pre-existing characters, they just flesh them out way better. But moving on to the negatives, I did talk more about the game in an impressions video. If you want to hear my thoughts on the actual systems, I don't want to be redundant to just repeat myself. But moving on to the more negative parts of this game... I think the main thing that this game had going against it is that I personally believe from what I can remember of Final Fantasy VII, now I haven't played it in four years so my memory might be a bit hazy, but this section of the game was probably the weakest where the game didn't engage me as much because I think just like Rebirth, the original section of this game was the section where Square Enix were like, look what we can do, we can make all these areas, we can give you all these mini games, we can give you this full world map that you can explore, and while I don't think exploring the world map is the issue because again I actually found it quite engaging to do all the side objectives, I think a large part of this game is about the journey and not the destination because it feels like a lot of the story points of this game are kind of a bit aimless where I'm kind of thinking oh why are we here or why did we go here, you know the world is ending but you know let's all get in our bikinis and you know go to the beach and have a fun time or the world is ending but wait 
I gotta do Chocobo Racing or something. And I get why this happened, and I think this has a bit of a, you know, Resident Evil 2 remake versus 3 remake debate, where I think Midgar is one of the strongest sections of the original game. So when they fleshed out one of the strongest parts, it made an extremely strong experience. Whereas I feel here, this is more the Resident Evil 3, where they're fleshing out weaker source material. And since the original was so minigame heavy, there was just an insane amount of mini games in this game and i enjoyed what i played of the mini games queen's blood is actually really good i got i actually got engaged in that way more than any other card game in any other game i've ever played the chocobo racing is ridiculously fun way better than dragon kart in a yakuza like a dragon like it actually feels quite fun to play but i just kind of felt that the game was at odds with itself and this is something that i've struggled with as i was like you know coming up with my thoughts on this game is that one thing I said in my impressions is that I really enjoyed it this game. It almost has a Yakuza-like vibe to it. And what I mean by that is that Yakuza is like super, super serious in moments. And then super, super whimsical in others. And I think Final Fantasy VII Rebirth does a really good job at that. And I really enjoy like the way the world is ending. But then they'll make some stupid joke. And this is where the game is at odds with itself. But also my thoughts on it are at odds with itself. Because on one hand... I really like the change in tone and how it can go from super serious to super funny in almost an instant. But then on a structure level, I kind of find it a bit weird that when the game was really ramping up in the final few chapters, you're like, oh, we're going to come to the end here. But wait, we have to go to the golden saucer again. And that just kind of annoyed me. And there you don't have to do the mini games the way you did in the first golden saucer chapter. But it was more just kind of a way to, you know, grind the pacing down to a halt and then of course we have to talk about the romance options in the game so as you do side quests and do synergy abilities with different characters your relationship improves and then depending on who your relationship is the strongest with in chapter 12 you get to go on a date with them and in this moment i, I wanted to go on a tifa date because i well prefer tifa over Aerith. if anything Aerith kind of annoys me in both of these games she's good but there's just something about her character that how almost naive she plays that just kind of, I don't know, I just, I just don't like it. So I wanted to go on a date with Tifa and the whole game is kind of moving towards Cloud going with Tifa and it feels like that's how it's going and I know, you know, this, this sounds absolutely ridiculous, you know, this is like the most weeby shit ever, but it felt like the game was moving in one direction and then I somehow had a better relationship with Aerith so I went on the Aerith date, which is fine. But then how the game ends, and I understand that this is, you know, where it ends, and of course, full spoilers, is that the whole Cloud and Tifa dynamic doesn't really make any difference to the ending of the story. And it's almost like they were building up to something that hopefully will play out in the third game, but there's always a chance that it doesn't. And I think that's the problem with trying to critique the story of a game that is very clearly supposed to be a continuous trilogy. Even though Square Enix come out and say, oh, you can play Rebirth without playing Remake. They're fucking idiots. That's just a stupid marketing ploy. Don't listen to them. You have to play Remake before Rebirth. And ideally, you'd probably play Final Fantasy VII before both, or at least be familiar with the story. But it just felt like they were building up to that big Cloud and Tifa moment, and it never happened. And I think I was a bit disappointed. Not... Not disappointed in a way like, oh, I want Cloud and Tifa to be together. It's more just, if a story is going in a certain direction, it should continue in that certain direction because, yes, sometimes plot twists are, are cool, but that's not a plot twist. I thought that was interesting. It, it just kind of felt like it came out of nowhere. And it feels like it's building up to something in the third game, and hopefully it pays off. And I think ultimately the thing that kills the game, I don't want to use that strong a term because I still really, really love it, is the pacing in the final few chapters. And it's for a couple of reasons. On one hand, I love that this game gave you more options as you're exploring the linear areas, because in Remake, it was walk down a corridor. Maybe you might interact with a button, but walk down a corridor and squeeze through this thing. And it was just very samey. I still love that game, but it was very samey. And here they gave you different things to do with the character. So Barrett can shoot certain things off in the distance and, and Yuffie has a grappling hook that she can use to platform around the place. And I really enjoyed them sections. But there was one section that they decided to absolutely obliterate the pacing. So at one point, you're playing as Kate Sid. And firstly, walking around as Kate Sid on the Moogle is really slow. When you're rolling around as him in the cat form, it's fine, but on the Moogle, just really slow, really cumbersome. And then they give you this mechanic where you have to pick up boxes and throw them at switches. And it just didn't feel good. 
It was super clunky. The controls just didn't really make any sense. Like I had to genuinely look at the controls every single time I threw a box. It just didn't feel natural. And it was just so, so slow and so boring. So in one case, it's one step forward and it's another step back. So I think it's maybe like a net neutral. And then the biggest killer of the pacing is the temple. The final temple slash dungeon of this game is extremely tedious and I genuinely do not understand what they were doing with this chapter. So I think we need to set up a bit of context going into this is that the story was ramping up like it was getting super serious and then all of a sudden it's oh we need to go back to the golden saucer to engaging some mini games and walk around trying to find people and then you go to the temple of the ancients and i'm like oh this is gonna be a cool section i wonder what they're gonna do here and this chapter felt like it was about four five hours long maybe five might be a bit of a push but three four maybe five hours long and it was just a slog it was a genuine slog they introduced two mechanics that were never used previously in the game where you can flip the temple upside down and it seems to be that there was like side areas because when you could flip the temple around you could flip it in multiple different ways and i think i just got lucky and managed to orientate the temple in the right way so that it kind of made it a bit faster but if i had flipped the temple and it only brought me to like a side room with some enemies and maybe an item i would have been very annoyed it's just super slow and the problem is they give you so many boss fights it kind of reminded me of the end of kingdom hearts 3 where they just gave you boss fight after boss fight after boss fight and then the final chapter is a full boss fight and it felt like the final two chapters were longer than the rest of the game even though they weren't just because of how it was paced exploring a temple with these mechanics that they just threw on you just wasn't fun and then they do that stupid thing with Aerith where you have to suck up the souls and you know move the platforms around i'm like oh just oh no no you were doing so good you were doing so good the game was so much fun and then you give me this and then on top of it you fight like three or four different boss fights in this chapter so it's like one room kill an enemy do some weird puzzle thing that's just completely annoying fight a boss seven hours earlier and then you go to a different group of of your characters do some more puzzles and then fight another boss and then wind it back fight another boss and then another and i'm like oh you just killed a pace and i don't understand i really don't understand what these jrpgs can't get right because just like yakuza like a dragon and just like this game they are fantastic games brilliant combat systems amazing characters loads of fun mini games and then as the story is ramping up they're just like boom no we need to stop you in your tracks and oh man oh man it just it frustrates me because it's almost brilliant it's almost brilliant and that's the thing when you get into these really good games where you're you're, you're going into the minutia to critique them because everything else is so strong and this game is so strong and of course i'm not gonna go completely in depth on the ending because one i think i should leave it up to people with smarter brains than i like maximilian dude or something i'll watch his video eventually when he when he releases it because he just understands all this i i'm just there enjoying the journey the ending just didn't satisfy me remake did satisfy me and the ending just didn't satisfy me it's very clearly setting up that this is a trilogy which we all know but i don't think remake had that same problem i thought remake ended at a really good point it ended at a definitive point and then because of the whole zach stuff it was like oh what's going on here but here it's more like okay we gave you an ending because we needed to end the game at some point there's not that many questions left to be answered in my in my mind like yes there's a couple of things with zach there's a couple of things like is Aerith alive i don't think she is she's obviously a ghost of some description or she's there in spirit or some crap because i think only cloud can see her so there's maybe some interesting stuff going on there but I just did not feel satisfied by the ending. And I think it's kind of difficult to go deeper than that because, it, because again, this could all be answered and by remake part three or whatever we're going to call it, like it really could be, oh God, I really like what they're doing here. But right now I'm just like, I really enjoyed my journey. I didn't really enjoy the destination. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is still a fantastic game. Way better than Final Fantasy XVI. Has the same issues as final fantasy 16 in pacing but rebirth has a 
way better cast of characters way better pacing even though you know the pacing is still pretty rough but 16's pacing was terrible and the combat system in 16 is like the most brain dead combat system ever it's like just press one button and win there you go final fantasy 7 rebirth goodbye